Hey guys, we're going to be learning about the roles of the president and hopefully you have already done the video of powers of the executive branch and filled in that information on your study guide. If you have not, please pause the video and do that now. Otherwise, let's get going. What are the roles of the president? Well, according to Article 2 of, this, of the Constitution, the, art, the president has many important roles to play. The first one is the chief executive. And as chief executive, he is the head of the national level of the executive branch. He carries out national laws and issues executive orders. And the president appoints cabinet members, ambassadors, and federal judges, creates the budget, and supervises the federal bureaucracy. All of that is in the role of chief executive. And one of the ways that I think about this is that an executive is like a business person. And in this role, the president is kind of the boss of the government. He's hiring people, he's making decisions, um, and he's just the you know head of, head of that branch. Here is a video of when um, of the president acting as chief executive when he appoints Thurgood Marshall to the Supreme Court. And please remember that in this video they're using historical language. So nowadays we you know. Uh, words that are used in this, but it is what was called at the, um, that time. So that's President Johnson standing next to Thurgood Marshall. Right, so answer the question on your sheet about, about that nomination. Next, we'll talk about the president as chief diplomat. And as chief diplomat, the president is the architect of American international policy, deals with foreign countries, and makes treaties and appoints ambassadors. So pretty much if you're trying to decide if, if we're on a quiz or something, if it's chief diplomat, a lot of it has to do with our relationships overseas. Part of keeping a peaceful nation is that we have good relationships with other countries, and that's the president's job to, to do that. Um, we've got some pictures here of um, in the upper right-hand corner. This is Jimmy Carter when he was president, and he um, was really trying to broker peace in the Middle East between Israel and Palestine. He made a lot of progress in that area. And then down here at the bottom is actually a picture of them um, put, putting together the Treaty of Versailles after World War I. Um, which, of course, did not get signed but by the United States. But um, the president was acting as chief diplomat, trying to have good relationships overseas, meeting with leaders of other nations, and trying to keep peace. Another role of the president is commander-in-chief. And as commander-in-chief, the president is the head of the nation's armed forces. He's in charge of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and he has the final say in military matters. He orders troops into battle. So we know that Congress and the legislative branch declares war, but the president is the commander in chief of the armed services, and he's the one who puts um, troops into battle. This picture here is President Obama speaking to troops in Afghanistan in 2009 as the commander in chief. This is a really interesting picture here. It's um, the Situation Room. You can see um, pre President at the time, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, and um, Joe Biden was the Vice President sitting here with the generals in the military. And this is taken when um, President Obama, when they captured and um, when they got Osama bin Laden. So it's a very interesting picture here. 
And as commander in chief, the president can deploy the armed forces to protect the nation if it's under attack. Here's a short video of Ronald Reagan and acting as commander in chief. So Ronald Reagan uh, explaining why he sent troops in as commander in chief. Next role of the president that is chief legislator. This is now we know we don't want to get confused because the president does not make legislation, but he does have an impact on it. And he proposes legislation to Congress through the State of the Union through speeches, especially through the annual State of the Union address. He prepares the federal budget. Um, in other words, setting out what the categories are. Um, we know that needs to be approved by the legislature, by Congress, and he can approve by signing or vetoing legislation. So basically, if you see on a test or quiz, um, anything that the president is doing having to do with laws, either suggesting a law or putting, you know, putting together a law or signing or vetoing a law, then he is acting as chief legislator. And here we have a short clip of um, President Bill Clinton signing the signing NAFTA into law. Bill Clinton as chief legislator when he signs that NAFTA law into bill into law. Next up, we have chief of state and the president. When we talk about chief of state, it's different than the department of state. We want to think of state as our country or being regal because this is really when the president is the ceremonial chief of state. And this slide is a little bit messed up, I think. Um, it right now without covering up some words but the president is the um, ceremonial head of state head of the government a symbol of the nation greets foreign leaders and nobility 
and participates in many ceremonies, for example, honoring the veterans and promoting U.S. holidays, lighting the national Christmas tree, and pardoning the turkey. You know what? Actually, while I'm in here, I'm just going to go ahead and take this out because I think it makes it confusing that because usually when he's doing stuff with um, when the president is doing things with other leaders, that has to do with being the um, chief diplomat. And that's not what the chief of state is. It's, it's when you want just the president to be there because he's the president. So leading a parade, um, you know, the um, annual Easter egg roll. That's just because it's fun. It's the president and maybe leading a parade. Um, but you would just want the president to be there because he's president. <laughs> and here is, you know, a fun tradition that the president does, pardoning the turkey. All right, so we can see from that video, there's nothing serious about it. It's just a fun tradition that's happening because he's president. And, you know, and most turkeys don't make it much past Thanksgiving because it's a centerpiece of Thanksgiving meal. But um, it's just the ceremony where the president, being the head of state, pardons these turkeys. And, and actually, they used to go to Frying Pan Park and some of the turkeys in Frying Pan Park right near us um, were turkeys that were pardoned by the President of the United States. Um, I think now they go to Mount Vernon, but they get pardoned and they live out their natural lives as turkeys. But the point is, is that the President does a lot of things just as the symbol of our nation and to be um, fun. Okay, next up, Chief of Party. This is not a, you know, birthday party. This is the political party that as chief of party, um, the political party leaders that control the executive branch. So the president helps lead his or her party and give it direction, supports other candidates in their campaigns from the same party and helps the party raise money. So the president fundraises and assists other party members with their campaigns for election. So currently we have Donald Trump as president and he is helping other Republicans to win because he is part of the Republican party. Um, so he goes out and raises money for other Republicans and gives speeches on their behalf. When Barack Obama was in office, he is a Democrat, so he helped um, other Democrats, help lead the party, help give them direction, talk about what issues to focus on, um, and that sort of thing. And uh, we have a video here of Bill Clinton when he was, um, um, when he's endorsing a fellow Democrat for office. Together and help me welcome a friend, a mentor, and a father, the 42nd President of the United States, William Jefferson. 
So this person, Allison, is running for Senate. 